Good morning. morning. Doing good? Awesome. (laughs) It's good to be back, especially with a cross behind me and Jesus before me. Can we bow our heads? Lord Jesus, we honor you. We thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the angels. Lord, we thank you for an open heaven over this house. Lord, we thank you for revelation, wisdom being imparted this morning in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for all your promises that are yes and amen. Lord, we thank you that this morning bodies are going to be healed, minds are going to be changed, strongholds are going to be destroyed. Lord, we thank you for the power that is in your word. And as you were said, there is life and death in the tongue. And we thank you, Lord, that this morning we're proclaiming life and life more abundantly in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that marriage will be restored this morning. Lord, I pray that financial breakthroughs supernaturally will take place this morning. That you download visions and revelations and dreams. And Lord, we thank you that when you accomplish something, no man can destroy it. When you open up, no man can shut it. And we thank you that your word never returns void or empty in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, You know, I I was able to be with Pastor Alex and the Crown Chapel team uh, last Sunday, Easter Sunday. I missed church here. And I know you guys had an amazing time in God's presence celebrating the wonderful resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And isn't this amazing? I love it. I love it. We don't, we don't need much, much gadgets. We just need the cross. And, you know, I made a statement several months ago when I was preaching. I said it's becoming fashion. It's a trend in the progressive church to remove the cross because there's this saying going on in church planting that if you remove the cross, you don't offend people. More people will come to church. So it's almost like, you know, you know it's like Jehovah sneaky. You know, you kind of slowly warm them up you know just warm them up and of course if you warm things up all you're going to get is warm christians so <laughs> either you're going to the fire or not there's no between either you're cold or you're hot and so i just made a statement i said man we get a it was just a, it was not premeditated it was one of those moments just it's just whatever it's when my mind flies out of my my mouth just came out and and, you know, of course, we had a gentleman, you know, Ken Michaels, who came up to me after the service, and he said, God told me you can do that. And I got the stuff at home, and I know you guys heard the story last Sunday. And I love it. It's clean. Like, it's, it's, the, it's just simple. And I, it, it's so, I love it. There's not much. Just, it's the cross. And, you know, what is amazing is an empty cross. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus is no longer on the cross. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father in the place of full authority, and he's waiting for his enemy to become his footstool. And so it's amazing that we as a church can, can kind of walk with him and accomplish that task. And way to go for all the young adults. 25 of them showed up on a, on a Friday. And that's amazing. So many things you can do, you know. You know, nowadays you got to have, you know, all kinds of stuff to attract young people and, but you know, just calling an evangelism. And they even said they're gonna evangelize, I think at the airport. And I was flying out and you know, I was looking maybe for a second thinking that someone gonna evangelize me. And then when I get born again, they're like, that was Pastor Kevin. <laughs> we actually have something, something like that happened. We had just a group of, I think 30 of us went out and evangelized. And, and I think one of our members went to another member and evangelized to him, and he was like, bro, we go to the same church. <laughs> so, you know, many people come in and go, and it's, it's fun, it's fun, you know. Uh, but I, I just love it that a young generation can go out and share the gospel. I, isn't that our mission? Isn't that what he commissioned the church, going to all the world, preach the gospel to every creature? In other words, everything that is walking around, everything, I mean, anything that is even alive, just preach the gospel. And these young people are out there preaching the gospel on a Friday, praying for the sick, calling out word of knowledge, and to God be the glory. And so I was in Florida. I flew on Friday, uh, arrived super late. I think we were like in the hotel at 1 a.m. We got the car, and, and uh, 
drove to the hotel, and Sunday morning, you know, we, we had our first service, and it was an amazing time in God's presence. What a successful lo- uh, church planting launch for Crown Chapel. You know, when, when Pastor Alex uh, told me several years ago he wanted to go to, to Florida, uh, you know, I really questioned the wisdom of it. Just got to be honest with you, because like, I'm like, man, you know, like, like what I'm at right now, like I was talking to one of our good friends, and I was just sharing about how much vision I have in my heart, what I want to see accomplished for the glory of God. And, and he was like, and I want to do it fast. Like, like I, I just, I want, I want to just run. Like I have everything to win. Amen. How, how many of you know we're running? How many of you know we're in a race? How many of you knew that we have a high calling? And so, you know, I just believe there's a great harvest. I just believe the harvest is right. I just believe that if you look from the right set of eyes, you can see opportunity and possibility. I don't believe that the world is going to hell in handbasket. I believe the world is going to get saved because the gospel is going to be preached. I know a lot of people are looking at all the, the signs of the end time and the eclipse that is happening tomorrow and the, what's going on in Israel and, and all of the, the famines and the pestilence and the rumors of war and, and weather patterns and earthquake and all those things are awesome. And those things are almost like a woman going into labor, but those are the beginning of sorrow. But the ultimate sign Jesus said is that in this gospel of the kingdom, Listen, will be preached to every tribe, every tongue, every nation, and then the end will come. So what's the ultimate sign? The gospel is going to be preached. So everyone, whether they receive it or reject it, is going to have an opportunity to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why do I believe that? It's because I believe that we are living in the greatest generation ever alive. Thank you for two of you and one hand on my right. How many of you believe that God, come on, kept you? Not during the time of Abraham or Moses or Elijah. Not even during the time when Jesus walked on the earth. God, come on, reserved you for time such as this. Because he has a mission and a purpose for you. And so I was, I was talking to him and he was like... Uh, do you feel like you like in a middle age crisis? Because you just want to accomplish so much. I said, brother, I'm in my prime. Right. I'm in the best season of my life. I'm not nervous. I'm not shaking. Neither am I schizophrenic. I just believe God can do great things today. And I get faith that when God speaks something, he can accomplish it. And he can use simple people like us. He doesn't need golden vessels. He doesn't need silver vessels. He just simply needs yielded vessels. So, of course, I questioned the wisdom of Pastor Alex. I said, man, dude, we are like in our prime and we get momentum and we can work together and we can accomplish together and we do work very good together. Like, you really want to go? He said, man, I feel God is calling me to go. I said, man, okay. And it took me a bit. You know, when, when someone that you really love and you work together with so well... Suddenly, you got to move up and go to the other side. And I'm from Europe. Like, U.S. is a massive country. You can fly for like five hours. You're still within this country. My wife is from the Netherlands. You take a car and you drive from the east to the west, two hours. So we coming from a country that you just drive an hour, you're in Germany. You drive another hour, you're in Belgium. You t- fly two hours, you're in Sweden. You drive a couple of more hours, you're in Switzerland. Or, I mean, you're in France. Or you, you might be in Italy. That's Europe. I won't go there. You should. <laughs> but he's moving to Florida. It's like a, almost a two-hour flight. I'm like, brother, I'm happy there's no time difference. And we get Akron Canton. There's some cheap flights. We can fly back and forward. You sure? He said, yeah, Kevin, God is calling me. And I saw the process of God. And I started to see the hand of God. See, I said, I don't want to just partner with you because we're brothers. I'm going to give you the right hand of fellowship. Because I see God is working through this whole vision. This is not just a good idea. This is God's idea. 
This is not just man sending somebody out, but God is commissioning Pastor Alex and his wonderful wife, Lindsay, and the family and the church planting team to go to Florida. Because when I went to Florida, I was like, this looks like a nice vacation spot. <laughs> and last time I checked, I lived in Cape Town, and God called me to Canton, Ohio. <laughs> I went from the Cape Townian to the Cantonians. <laughs> we got beautiful creatures everywhere. Amen. And, you know, so I start to like, like, man, like, is this really wise? But I'm telling you, last Sunday, I just sat there and I saw them through the sacrifice and their obedience. Many of them, not just Pastor Alex and his wife, Lindsay, we have family members here who have paid a high price of letting go to their loved ones and children and sons and daughters and grandchildren and niece and brothers and sisters. And, and a high price they paid to go to Florida and last Sunday, a great seed was planted into the ground in Lee County. And let me tell you something. Sometimes we think that, you know, when we plant something, because that's what they teach you in church planting, you got to have this, you know, massive launch, and you got to attract hundreds of people to come, but they're missing the very principle of the kingdom of God. Jesus said in his word that the kingdom of God is as a mustard, which is smallest seed of them, but when that seed is planted into, it becomes a great herb, greatest than all of them. And it grows up to become a large tree. What's the principle? God does not always start big. He might just choose 120 out of the 500 he visited in the upper room. And he comes with the Holy Spirit and there is revival. He might just choose to take his own son and plant it in the womb of a woman and bring a humble birth and a small beginning to accomplish something great. You know why God chose Israel? God didn't choose Israel because they were numerous. <laughs> he didn't choose Israel, Charlie, because they were significant. God said, because you are not numerous, because you're insignificant, I choose you to display my glory through you. Come on, we know our Bibles. So what am I saying? You watch and see what God's going to do in Lee County through the obedience of Crown Chapel. Watch out, devil. The seed is planted and no one can stop it. I know the devil is mad and we as the people of God, we are glad. Amen. And so I was blessed. I didn't go there to do anything with, with Seth just to support and seeing his leadership, seeing the, the team dynamic and how they're working together, man. It brought me back to the early days. I think they had like 38 some adults showing up. And they had about 17 kids. And remember, no connections. Six months ago, none of them really have been there in the sense of living there or having this great opportunity to have vacations there. And maybe some people travel through. But Alex only had some two relationships that he thought was going to be the door frame into Fort Myers. But when you look at the wrong door, you better turn and see that when you expect God to come in from the front door, He's going to surprise you from the back window. Amen? Amen? So you have a church family in Fort Myers. If you're ever there for vacation on a Sunday, visit them. You, you will be blessed. I just love being there. And of course, I love mi missing church with you guys, but amazing. God is good. I'm not just trying to be optimistic, even though I am. I just love... Love speaking faith. Amen. Now, I want to talk this morning. Uh, if you have your Bibles, please. I want to talk about feeding your faith and starving your doubts. Everybody say, feed your faith. Feed your faith. Starve, your doubts. Starve your doubts. And the reason I want to talk about feeding your faith and starving your doubts is because I believe we're living in a time where there is so many things that is coming against our faith. A matter of fact, Jesus Christ himself said that when the Son of Man comes on the earth, on the earth, shall he find faith? Shall he find faith? The Lord Jesus said in the last day that the love of many will grow cold. And I believe one of the reasons that people are going to walk in deception and walking away from the faith, many people are going to give in to deceiving spirits, doctrines of demons, but many people are also going to be really crippled with fear. 
Fear is something that grips people's faith. When you are in fear, you cannot have faith. And so I really felt this week as I was studying the word, I felt God wanted me to teach about the power of the tongue, that God wanted me to impart something to you because some of you are in a situation in your life that unless you do not believe God and unless you don't have faith, there is no solution from you from A to B. How many of you this morning are tired of going around the mountain? At some point, we get a transition from A to B because all the very promises of God are meant to be possessed because His promises are not if and amen in Christ Jesus. They are yes. And God doesn't just want you to possess some promises. Come on, I'm going to name it, clap. I'm going to grab it and I'm going to have it because I believe with all of my heart, God wants you to possess all of the promises of God. And I'm telling you, David said, I would have fainted if I did not see the goodness of God in the land of the living. I'm not talking about one day when we transition from here to the next life. Oh, that's the place we got to... Be delivered from this body of sin and we're going to walk in ultimate victory. Even though that is truth, I believe that in this life, God wants us to taste of the powers of the age to come. Amen. He wants us to walk in healing. He wants us to walk in freedom. He wants us to walk in prosperity. And, and, and don't freak out by the word prosperity. Prosperity simply means having all your needs taken care of and having enough to be a blessing to other people. I want to tell you that the people of this country are living in prosperity. You don't believe me? Come on a plane and fly 15 hours with me to Africa and watch how people live in poverty. But God wants you to walk a victorious life. God does not want anyone to be a subject to a devil. God doesn't want anyone to be bound by shackles of sin. He doesn't want anyone to live in addiction. He doesn't want anyone to be in prison. He wants his people to be free. Come on, are you alive this morning? Because the Bible said, whom the Son sets free. Free indeed. And if you're free, who can put you in bondage? No one can. And the only thing that keeps people in bondage is ignorance and, and I believe, lack of knowledge. Lack of understanding of what Jesus accomplished on the cross. So, so this morning we're going to look at Mark chapter 5. And it's going to be beautiful. Because I really believe that some of you are in a situation where you go around the mountain, but all you need is a word. Now, I want to quickly explain to you that... What you believe, I will say it again, what you believe determines where you will end up in this life. Your belief system is important. What you believe determines where you end up in this life. Remember, the Bible says in Hebrew chapter 4 that the Israelites, they failed to enter into the promised land. Because of unbelief. The Bible said that the corpse fell in the wilderness. And Corinthians says that let that be an example for us. Lest we also have a heart of unbelief. The Bible calls a heart of unbelief an evil heart. God does not want any of us to have a rebellious heart. But a believing heart. God doesn't want us to have a heart of unbelief, but he wants us to have a heart of faith so that we don't fall in the wilderness, but we can transition and possess the promised land which he has promised for us to possess. How many of you have promises from God? Come on, raise your hands. And if you sit here, I, I, I don't know if I get, listen, you have the Bible. The Bible has enough promises, and I'm telling you, it is for you to possess and walk in it. But many people fail to walk in the promises of God simply because of a wrong belief system. Remember that in Deuteronomy chapter 10, when Moses sent out the spies, Charlie, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. It says, as the spies was coming back, that 10 of them had a bad report. Everybody say bad report. Bad report. 
Have you ever been around people that are always negative? It's like, what, what, it's like, oh, you just, just always negative. Negative about everything in this life, negative about themselves, negative. I mean, you, you talk to them for five minutes, you just want to run away. <laughs> they came back and they brought bad report and God was not happy because God had already said, I have given you this promised land to possess. I have given it into your hands, but it is your job to believe what I have said and transition in and possess what I have given to you. They brought bad report. And then you had two young men by the name of Caleb and Joshua who brought good report. The bad report was that the land is filled with giants. They're numerous. And when the ten spies came and they said, we are like grasshoppers in their sight. You know what the Bible says? And like grasshoppers they were. So in other words, as a man thinks of him. Come on, guys. I'm preaching now. In his own heart. So he says, the way you look at life is the way you look at yourself. Because out of the abundance of the heart, a man speaks. Jesus said that power of life and death is in the the small member can bless you or curse you. When James said that the small member, it's like a ship. It can, it can steer your life into different direction. This little member of mine can do great harm. And James said, how is it that you bless God with the same tongue? And that's a God that you cannot see. And you curse men that you can see. How is it, brethren, that both sweet water and salt water comes from the same well? That when we teach that from the book of James, we only talk about other people. But what about blessing your own life and cursing your own life? How many people have put a snare for themselves, like the book of Proverbs says, of entering into the promised land by the very word that they speak? I have heard many people say that God cannot do that. And I say to them, you said God cannot do that. Of course he cannot do it because you just put a snare on yourself and you keep yourself from promise because you prophesied the outcome of your life. Amen. Come on, I didn't say the power of life and death is in the tongue. God said it. God said, can you say amen? amen? Jesus said, by the word which you speak, you shall be justified. But by the same word which you speak, you shall be condemned. Men would give an account for every word that we have spoken. It's in the Bible. So, so now they say that we are like grasshoppers. And the Bible says, because they said they were like grasshoppers, so were there in their sight of the giants of the land. And how many of you know that grasshoppers don't eat grapes? Because the grapes was huge. Remember the promised land? A land God said that flows with milk and honey. I would like to have some more than milk and honey. But, but you know what God meant? He meant it was plenty. It is prosperous. It is the promised land. God has given it into your hands. And all of you has a promised land that God wants you to possess for your life. For the life of your family, come on. Yeah. Your inheritance. And so you cannot just sit there with the naysayers. You have to stand up and believe the word of God. Yeah. And possess what God has given into your hands. You know what Caleb and Joshua said? They said, I know there are giants in the land, but God has delivered them as bread unto us. No problem for God. The giants are no issue because God will deal with the giants. What we have to do is to believe what God has said and possess what God has already given to us. And that is very applicable today in 2024 in Canton, Ohio, because we have the Bible. Can you say amen? amen. And so what you believe is extremely important this morning. What you believe about yourself, what you believe about God, what you believe about who God is, is extremely important. And so I want us to also now look at some of the outlines that I'm going to speak on. And I want to just encourage you, you can find a far better teaching 
I didn't come up with his teaching. Brother Hagin did was given to him by the Lord Jesus Christ himself in a visitation. And it is an outline of how you can possess the promises of God by believing what God has spoken to you. Now, when I say feed your faith and starve your doubt, you need to understand I'm not talking about that when some people are walking around in fear, intimidation, and paranoia of speaking the wrong thing. That is not faith. That is fear. If you're walking around and you guarding your mouth so much because you think that if you say one word wrong, have you, have you met those in that name it, claim it, grab it, have it camp? They're afraid of naming something. One, what, if I say one thing wrong, come out of my lip. God is going to judge me. I'm not going to get a promise of God. So now the words which they speak is not motivated from the place of love and intimacy. It's coming from the place of fear. And the Bible says that fear involves torment. And he who has fear has not been perfected in the love of God. So, so I'm not talking about walking around, you know, like, you know, just making sure you have the right confession. L listen, when a man came to Jesus, Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? The man said, I'm blind. Hello? Come on. I'm blind. So I I'm not talking about denial this morning. Listen, faith does not call things that be as though they are not. Faith, Hebrews 4 said, call things that are not as though they were. That's faith. Faith is not, listen, a bridge over troubling waters. Faith is the capacity and the ability of the word of God inside of you to walk through the fire and come out and not smelling like smoke. That's faith. So when I'm talking about the right confession, I'm talking about you feeding your faith. And you're starving your doubt. And we're going to look at this story in Mark chapter 5, verse 25 and 34. And I just want to simply uh, just uh, emphasize the straightforward teaching style of Jesus. If you're in Mark 5, and we're going to start reading uh, from verse 21. If you dare say amen. amen. We're going to read through the whole story. Okay. Now when Jesus had crossed over again by boat to the other side, a great multitude gathered to him, and he was by the sea. And behold, one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. I want you to remember that Jairus was a ruler of the synagogue. Number one, I want you to also remember that she was lying at the point of death. Then he said, come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she will live. So Jesus went with him and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. I cannot pronounce that word right. It simply means that it was such a crowd following Jesus that as he was walking, everybody was pressing him from every side. And so there was a big multitude. Commotion was going on. I mean, here's Jairus, the ruler of the synagogue. He's a I mean, religious man. He's approaching Jesus, kneels down to him and says that he has a problem. His daughter is at the point of sickness, you know, in the bed at the point of death. And Jesus does not say one word. He just walks with him. And everybody there, they're like, we want to see what's going on. Have, have, you, have you ever felt like that? Yeah. You know, when you're in church and, and, and somebody's going to pray for someone and the man of God says, close your eyes. I'm like, I'm not closing nothing. <laughs> have you ever felt like that? I'm going to watch this miracle. And so these guys were following Jesus. But the problem was that there were so many people around him that the situation was that everybody was pressing to Jesus. So I want you to kind of see this scene and see this picture. Verse 25. It says, now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years. Remember, 12 years. And had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, when she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, 
If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately. Everybody say immediately. Immediately. The fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched me? I love Jesus. Who touched me? But his disciples said to him, probably Peter, you see the multitudes pressing you and you say, who touched you? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, daughter, the Bible calls her a woman, a certain woman, issue of blood. Jesus calls her daughter. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. So as we are looking at this story, I want us to kind of understand something of the context. Now, Jairus was a ruler of the synagogue, and he had an issue. Now, the woman for 12 years had an issue too. It was an issue of blood. But his issue was actually a sickness that had gripped his 12-year-old daughter. Isn't that amazing? 12-year-old daughter, and here's a woman who has an issue for 12 years. And now, Jairus is approaching Jesus first and saying, why don't you come and pray for my daughter? Recognizing that Jesus is the one who carries healing authority. And Jesus is the one who has the power to, 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 to create anything that is impossible. Now, this is the text. Is that the woman who have an issue of blood, she was considered, according to the Messianic law, unclean. Ceremonial unclean. So... Which simply means that a woman would normally have a cycle once a month. But the Messianic law said that even seven days after the cycle was done, she could not touch anything or anyone because if she would touch anything or anyone, that would be considered unclean. So she had to stay in privacy. Which means that number one, she could not be in public. Number two, for her to even... Daring going and touching Jesus was a no-no because Jesus would consider a rabbi, a teacher. Number three, see, the very one who could command her to be stoned to death was Jairus as the ruler of the synagogue. R Listen, can you see the picture of impossibility? Can you see the picture of what she had to do and go through to get her miracle? It was not just by preacher commonly hands on me. It was about I need a miracle in my life. And I'm going to do anything it takes to get the miracle. Amen. Can you shout amen? amen? And so, but this woman had many problems. Number one, that she had gone to many physicians. The Bible actually says that she had suffered many things from many physicians. Isn't that crazy that when you go through a time of sickness and you go to doctors and you think like the doctor's going to help you? And sometimes I've even talked to people that when they go to a doctor and the doctor, you know, are trying to help them, they actually ended up being worse after the surgery than when they went in. I know people that have died under the surgeons, hands of the surgeon. Now, I personally believe in medical doctors. I believe they're a gift. A person believe in medication, if it is done in right proportion, with wisdom, if you don't put your trust in that, but you put your trust first in the Lord Jesus Christ and His Word. I don't believe that God would say to you that you have a lack of faith because you turned to a doctor. We know in the Bibles that there was actually a king who had boils on his body, and Isaiah asked the question. God said, go tell him, take some figs and put it on the boil. God can use natural remedies... Come on, guys, to perform a miracle. But, but sometimes when you go to the doctors, it's not pleasant. She had suffered many things 
from the hands of many doctors. She had gone to Mercy. She had gone to Cleveland Clinic. She had gone to the best doctors in the country. But the Bible says she was not growing better. But rather her condition was growing worse. When I was reading this, I thought about 12 years having an issue. Most of the people that have an issue in their body more than two years, now they associate with a sickness and the sickness becomes their very identity. Right. It's super hard to shake them from that place because identity is not based on who they are in Christ and what he has done. Their identity is now becoming who they feel that they are at the moment with their physical infirmity. But not with this woman. She did not allow her circumstance to become the outcome of her life. She believed that there was a solution for her if she went to Jesus. Not only that, had she suffered many things from hands of many physicians and she was growing worse. The Bible said she had spent all her livelihood. Let me tell you something. Moving from Europe to America, your medical system is funny. <laughs> like, like I'm, I'm, not, I'm saying it with all respect. I mean, they love to rob people in this country. Yeah. Like, like, like you go to a doctor because your pinky hurts and you come out with thousands of dollars in medical bills stacked up. And here's a woman who has spent all the money that she had, her livelihood, every, every saving and checking and everything she had, she spent it on medical physicians. The Bible said that she had nothing more left. We don't even know at this point if she is even married, have children, or if she is homeless. Because the Bible only says that she is a woman who just referred to who have an issue of blood for 12 years. You know why I know sickness does not come from God? I, it, it so frustrates me when, when, when man attributes to God what doesn't belong to him. They were like, God gave me this to teach me. I'm like, honey, a brother... <laughs> God doesn't have any sickness to give. Amen. See, the Bible says here, says here that it had robbed her, robbed her of all the money and the livelihood she had. And the moment I hear the word rob, I'm thinking about the devil. Because the thief has come in to kill, to steal, and to Come on, we got to get some of those doctrines of demons and theology of men out of our mind and here to come on the unalterated word of God and be healed. Because the word is the solution. We got to come and believe the word. Put our trust in the word. Not in the man of God and his anointing and his gift and run around to different people and prophesy over me and pray for me. No, we got to get back to the word. Do I believe? Listen, I have a ministry of healing. I minister of healing all around the world. I'll be in Africa in two weeks preaching to ten thousands of people. I believe in a ministry of healing. Mark 16 said, you shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. Come on, James 5 says, if there's anyone sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. Anoint him with oil in the prayer of faith. Shall heal them. I believe in that. But you know what I believe? What do you do when there is no preacher? Come on. What do you do when, the, when there's no moving of the Holy Spirit? What do you do if the man of God has not done his gymnastic before he came to the service? Do you have the word of God? So you got to get back to the word of God and not just look for people to give you something. Listen to me. If you are in a situation and people are ministering to you, that's awesome. But ultimately, the Bible said you will know the and the truth shall set you free. Never it says a deliverance minister. Come on. The truth shall set you free. Because anyone who, listen, ministers deliverance to you, deliverance is only 5%. 95% is for you to fill yourself up with the word of God. Because the demon that is cast out, come on. He will go to dry places. When he cannot find any rest, he will go back to his house. And when he finds that house kept, swept, and put in order, it says. But it's not filled. He will go back and get seven other demons. Sometimes we cause more harm delivering people, but not teaching people how to stay delivered. How do you stay delivered? By the word of God. How do you mature in Christ? By the word of God. She had spent all that she had and she was not getting better, but she was growing worse. And 
She was robbed by the devil even though she was a daughter of Abraham. The reason we know she was daughter of Abraham is because Jesus called her daughter and he would never call anyone outside the house of Israel of that time a daughter of Abraham. She was a daughter of Abraham. Are you with me? Are you learning something? Now, it also says that this woman, that she heard about Jesus. She heard about Jesus. And this is very important for you when it comes to hearing. She heard about Jesus. How did she hear about Jesus? A chapter before, you could see Jesus performing a miracle. And Mark 5 starts by Jesus delivering a man who had a legion of demons. You remember the swines into all died. So she hears that this man has healing power. See, why is it important for you to hear? Jesus said, take heed of what you hear. Today we are surrounded with so much bad news. I don't even have cable TV in my house. You know why? Because you watch that TV. Every commercial is a medical commercial. It's a lawsuit commercial. I don't understand that, man. And you're sitting there, shabara, mantero, bokoro. You're like happy and eating your popcorn and watching a nice movie. And suddenly, uh, I just want to tell you that uh, if you have a pain on your side, and you're like, uh, <laughs> pain on my side. And suddenly now you're imagining things that are not there to be there. And then you stand up, honey, I think my side is hurting. And your wife is like, why don't you just Google that? Maybe you can find some information on Google. And now you just go to Google and you start to research some stuff. And now you don't get more bad news. You are not feeding your faith. You are actually feeding your doubt. And so we are surrounded with bad news. And we are not surrounded with good news. And the gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ. So you have to do anything you can to get the word of God inside of your ears. Because the Bible says, faith cometh by hearing. Faith does not come by the word of God alone. Faith cometh by hearing. and hearing by. Word of God. So it means the word of God is not optional. It's a must. You got to run in your house. I put on the word with my wife every single night. That thing is on the whole night in our bedroom. How can you sleep? I don't know, but I do. It's far more better than having a bunch of junk put up in the background and watching a bunch of junk that clouds my mind when I'm going to go into bed. She heard about Jesus. And I want to tell you, what you hear and know about Jesus matters. She heard about Jesus and she decided to go and to touch the garment of Jesus. But before she went, and this is the first principle I want you to see number one brother Hagen says that the Lord told him is that you need to say it speak it everybody say number one, number one. Say, it. say it number one you got to say it so in other words it is very important for you to maintain a positive compassion for she said to herself When I believe something, I am not talking to myself. I'm trying to convince everybody of what I believe. That's the problem. Because you want to try to convince Butter Rubber and Sister Sandpaper and, and Family Popsicle what's going to happen. They're going to get a reflection back to you. What are you talking about? Sometimes we have to be careful of what we share with people because people don't understand the Word of God. And that if the advice is a godly advice, sometimes mind of the people are filled with the things of this world and not filled with the things of the word of God. She didn't go around and tell people and try to convince people about her healing. She spoke to herself. I wake up in the morning and I don't feel like it. I said, man, Lord, I thank you that I am your righteousness in Christ Jesus. Lord, this morning, I don't feel like it, but I thank you that you have delivered me from the power of darkness and put me into the kingdom of light. Lord, I thank you that I might even feel this thing in my, in my back. I really don't care because by your stripes, I were healed over 2,000 years ago. And if I am healed, I was healed. And right now, in Jesus' name, Satan, I command to take your all false symptoms from me and leave. 
and you maintain that positive confession. I'm not going around to the office and like, I'm, like, <coughs> I'm healed, brother. <coughs> I'm healed, brother. <laughs> Keep the confession. Talk to yourself. Are you with me? Yeah. The problem becomes when you try to convince people, it means that you will not convince yourself. <laughs> Are you hearing me? It means you're not, because if you convince yourself, why would you try to convince others? Keep on speaking the word of God. She kept on speaking the word of God. We don't need the worship team to come forward because I really believe, the reason I'm teaching this this morning, because, listen, I can lay hands, you know me, I can prophesy and there's a place for it. There is a place for it. We have to come to a place where we mature up and we get hold of this Bible. And I know many of you have, and many of you are. I'm not saying that you are not. What I'm trying to tell you is because I talk to people all the time, and without five minutes, I know the condition of their hearts, basically based on what they speak. And it's very hard for me to pray for someone who is in doubt and unbelief. And so we have to, in this last day, build ourselves strong in the Word of God. We have to. We have no other weapon. The word of God is a sword, and we have to learn to use it against the devil. Amen. The Bible says, listen, resist the devil. I cannot resist the devil for you. Come on. Resist the devil, and he shall flee from you, the Bible says. It's called responsibility and maturity. It's called of us taking the word of God at face value and believing it, and maintaining the right confession based on the word of God. She maintained the right confession because no matter what she was going through, she said, if I only touch the hem of his garment, I will be made well. And then what she did after speaking this, she actually acted on what she said. Acted on what she said. So number one, say it. Number two, do it. It is not only enough to believe. James said, even the demons believe and they tremble. Right. Even demons believe and tremble. So, in other words, if I believe that God is a healing God and never pray for the sick, it simply means I don't believe that he's a healing God. If I do not preach the gospel and say I believe that the gospel saves, it simply means I don't really believe that the gospel saves. So, so this is important. Don't feel bad. Come on, I'm, I'm trying to help you, okay? Are you with me? Are you getting help? Everybody say, say it. Say it. Then do it. You know why? Because faith without works is dead. Just as your body is dead without the spirit, so is faith dead without works. Demons believe there is one God. They even fall in the spirit. They tremble. But when they stand up after being slain, they don't follow God. They disobey God. And so the way believing happens, believing happens in your heart. With the heart, a man believes unto righteousness. But with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So the way it works is that the word enters into your ear. Faith coming by hearing. It drops into your heart. If it just stays in your heart, it does not develop a belief system. There needs to be a connection between your heart and your mind and what you say. Because out of the abundance of the heart, a man speaks. Simply it means when the word of God comes into your mind, through your ears, it should not go up into your mind. Because if it goes only up to an intellectual place, you don't have revelation, you only have information. In the West, we have a lot of information about God. <laughs> but it's not so much about us knowing about God, but rather being known by God. So when the word enters into the ear, it has to drop into your heart. When belief system is literally developed in your heart, now you start to act on what you believe because with the heart a man believes unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation, faith is a verb. Faith is an action. So when I make an altar call in a crusade, do you believe that God raised Jesus from the dead? 
Yeah. I don't do, you know, how we do it, like, just God knows your heart. Bow, bow your heads. Bow your, just close your eyes. You don't have to raise up your hand. You don't have to, just be comfortable in your chairs. No, 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 no. Jesus said, listen, Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me before men, my angels will be ashamed of you before my father. So would I. So you believe that God raised Jesus from the dead? Yeah, in the crusade. Now, act on your faith. Raise up your hand. Come to the front. And pray the prayer of faith. And speak that you're born again. When you do that, something happens because now there's a connection between what you believe and what you say. Everybody say, number one, say it. Number two, do it. Everybody say, do it. Come on, we got to be doers of the word and not hearers only. Because it's not enough to just be doers without actually knowing what we do so you need to get understanding and not to have a blind faith but to have a faith that is based on the word of god and what did she do she pressed through the crowd in obedience to the word and she reached out and touched the garment of jesus so so there was a connection there between his garment and her faith faith was actually the connecting point to the miracle Number three, Brother Hagin says, and receive from the Lord. First say it, then do it, then receive it. This is something that people do struggle with quite a bit. Because the Bible says, actually, it is important to believe what you receive and to receive what you believe. And this woman, it says, when she touched Jesus, not only did Jesus feeling in himself that virtue had left him, Do you know that the healing power of God is tangible? Let me tell you something else. She even felt in her body that the fountain of blood dried up. I was was, uh, teaching at a Bible school in Cape Town, South Africa, just like this. I was teaching on faith. And I had a couple of people in there, a little bit older, you know, God bless their hearts. They were kind of looking at me like, what is this young you know, whippersnapper saying today, you know, what is, he, what is he talking? He doesn't know what he's talking about. It was one of those moments. And I was just having fun as I always do. And I just said, okay, we're going to demonstrate the word now. Such a faith in the room, the rest of the young people were hungry. And, and it was just one of those moments, just hunger. But it was just a couple of people that were just checking me out. Like, who is this guy? What is he doing? He kind of dressed a little bit strange. He kind of looks a little bit strange. His accent, I don't know about his accent. It was one of those moments. <laughs> And I said, there's somebody here, if you have a leg that is shorter than the other, you know, it's like, it's a notable shortness of your leg. Maybe your hip is out of socket and you have pain, you go to chiropractor, you're getting help. A girl stood up, and we actually have this on, on video, you can find this on YouTube, this is a public thing. Because I didn't film it, put it on YouTube, by the way, somebody filmed it, gave it to me, and then I put it on, I did put it on YouTube, but it was putting it on, on my own page, but I didn't film the whole thing. And this is the craziest part. She was two, about two inches shorter in her leg. Okay? So they came, and as we prayed, and I didn't even pray. I asked somebody else to pray because we were demonstrating it. Pray that it would grow up. So he held, and I said, don't, don't pray that God would do it. You command it to grow up. Use the authority that you have in Christ and the authority of the spoken word. So he said, in the name of Jesus, come out. Boom. It straightened right there. And, you know, the whole, all the students were screaming. And it was a big commotion in the room. And I looked up. I could see the same people thinking that we were pulling somebody's leg. You know, you always have doubting <laughs> believers and unbelieving believers. And I, heard, I never heard this ever since again. But the Lord told me, I'm going to do something that's going to astonish them. I said, what? He said, pray for that leg to grow back. I'm going to even grow it back more than what it was. You think anything is impossible for God? And so I said, pick up the legs. They did. Look perfect. I said, tell the leg to go back. He was like, what? What And and, and it was such an atmosphere of faith. It was not arrogance. It was confidence in the authority of Christ. Demonstration. Pray literally. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. You can see it on the video. 
to the point that the student was screaming, it is worse than what it was again. And then we said, in the name of Jesus, come out. And he came out. Okay? Demonstration of the power of God. And some people say, why would God do something? Because he wants every believer to be believers. He wants every believer to be a believer. Now, my mentor's wife was in the classroom. She saw that happen. So my mentor was flying in from Singapore preaching, and he arrived, and, and his wife been having arthritis in her arm, problem, pain, been to a doctor, and she needed a surgery. And, and so when he came home, she was like, can you call Kevin to come and pray? And he was like, I'm the man of God here. <laughs> call for Kevin. Like, I can pray. You know, she was like, no, 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 no. I know you're the man of God. I love you. But just call for Kevin to come and pray. Because she had just seen a miracle. Called, and, and, and he called me. He said, he said, listen, I just came home from three weeks of traveling. All she's talking about, you coming and praying. Can you just come home quickly and pray for her? So I said, absolutely. I drove there. We sat around the table. And uh, she, I said, do you believe if I pray for you, you're going to get healed? I said, absolutely. That's what I called you to come here and pray. And so, and she called for me. She believed that if I prayed, something would happen. Okay? I laid my hands. The moment I touched her, I felt virtue, strength, leaving my body. And I said, oh, did you feel that? She said, yes. All the pain in that moment left her body. She had never had problem with arthritis or any other itis from that moment. You know why? Because the power of God is present to heal every single person who has infirmity if we dare to believe in the goodness and the word of God. But listen to me. She felt virtue leave. Now, if I would have prayed and said, man, did you feel that? She said, no, I didn't feel nothing. People, I have prayed for people and I feel them getting healed. I feel the tangible presence of the Spirit of God entering to their bodies. And all they, they can think of is like, no, but you know what the doctor said? This is impossible. It's impossible because I'm trying to release the healing power of God into your life. And instead of you receiving it, you're rejecting it. So say it, do it, and then receive it. Receive the power of God into your life. She felt in her body that she was healed. And so you need to trust God. You need to trust God and you need to trust God's timing. You need to trust God and you need to trust God's timing. I had a lady coming to uh, our healing meeting one Sunday. It was actually on Friday. And she had a rotator cup in her shoulder. She needed a surgery. She got on to a doctor. She, she had been performed on her shoulder many times. And uh, I came to the service and wanted to pray for healing. And she said, when you prayed for me, it was the most pathetic prayer I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank God it's not about the man of God. Amen. <laughs> it's not about how good you speak English and how you can articulate and how you know the muscles and the cells. In the end of the day, after you have done all your praying, do you believe when you say, in the name of Jesus? Amen. And so she, 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 she said, your prayer was prophetic, pa not prophetic, pathetic. And she said, I went back and he said, I went into a vision because you said from the front, if you need a miracle, I don't have the time to pray for everybody, 500 people in the room. You just reach out by faith and touch the hem of his garment. And as I said that, she said, I saw Jesus in front of me. And as Jesus was standing in front of me, I saw his garment. And as I reached to touch the garment, Jesus said, not now. Not now. She was so confused. Not now. Not now. She ended up going back to the chiropractor, who was actually Roman Catholic. And the moment she was lying under him to do his, I mean, procedure, whatever he was doing on her shoulder, that the moment he touched her, the power of God hit her. And she felt all the pain leaving her shoulder. She said, I stood up in the room, raised up my hands, started to shout, hallelujah, I'm healed. And he was at the corner in the room looking at me, totally strange. What is going on? 
Then he did all kinds of tests on my shoulder, saw that I was healed. And the next Sunday, this Roman Catholic person was in the church testifying that Jesus had performed a miracle. And that was such a testimony in his life that God was not only the one who was the healer, which he knew, but he also knew that he could be born again by the power of God. Right. Knowing the timing. Knowing the timing. Lastly, she got afraid. And once again, she got afraid because I believe Jairus was there. And as she was kind of telling, Jesus said, who touched me? The disciples was like, what do you mean who touched me? There's a lot of people here. Many people are pressing through. Why do you say who touched me? And in this moment, as she was explaining the whole thing to Jesus before Jesus said, daughter, your faith has made you well. Jesus, I believe, wants you not to only receive it, do it. He wants you to also tell it. Tell it. Tell it. Do you know what I found in this culture here? God is doing far more than we can hear. People like to keep testimonies for themselves. Do you know when you don't proclaim what the Lord has done, that's when the enemy can snatch it from you? The demonized man who wanted to follow Jesus, Jesus said, don't follow me. Go and tell them what I've done for you. How many of you know, remember when you get born again, you told everybody about what God has done. Remember that? Right. Tell it. Say it. Do it. Receive it. Tell it. What should I tell? Tell people what the Lord has done in you your life amen. amen i want to be here i'm going to pray and release you guys but this morning i want i feel so much faith to pray for people and i'm going to stand here if it takes me two hours no matter what you have i'm committed to pray for you i want to stand here and i'm going to minister and i know the ushering team if you need to go home at some point i get it i get it but i'm committed to stand here and i know my team's going to stand with me and I'm going to pray for everyone because I believe, listen to me, I believe God wants to heal people's bodies today. Amen. Conditions. He wants to deliver from people. Listen, and I know you're like, Pastor, it's 12 o'clock. What do you want more? I'm, just asking, I'm not telling you to stay here. You can go home if you want to. Here was a woman who had an issue of blood. She'd been waiting 12 years for a miracle, spent all the money that she had. Who knows that a moment would be today? And I just believe with all of my heart that some of you are going to have a, a life-changing experience in the presence of God. Mario, God is doing a great things in your heart. And you will see a season of breakthrough where God is going to bring you from point A to B. You have been meeting walls of resistance, but it's a time of breakthrough in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I really believe with all of my heart that God's going to... Can you just put on the instrumental in the background, whoever can? And I just want to pray over you and release you for those who want to go... I don't feel like praying in corporate. I want to lay hands on people. Old-fashioned, tent revival, crusade style, laying hands on people. Can we do that? But if you want to go home, that's totally fine. But remember one thing. Remember that when you do go home, hold on to the Word of God. Don't give up on the Word of God. Make the Word of God your shield and your buckler. Make the word of God the very foundation of your life. No one's going to feed you. Are you hearing me? Listen, the days are over when we think that there's going to be a superstar Christianity where the man of, behind the Pope is going to do it. Those days are over. Today is about the body of Christ and the maturity of the saints for the work of the ministry. For the work of the ministry. Could you stand up with a green shirt? Just stand up. Yeah. Once again, if you need to leave, no, behind, please. I will cross over you soon. Green also. I say, Mille, that's an olive green. I like that. That's a real bright green. <laughs> I could only see bright. I'm a little bit color bright. No. Thank you, Lord. Why don't you come? Come, come. I want to have an usher. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. As I was speaking, I, I saw a light over you. I see it sometimes over people. Why don't you just come here? Stand, stand, just face me. Just stand here and face me. Yeah. Thank you. 
face of you. I saw light all over you. Jesus, Jesus. Lord, I thank you that I saw your presence, your anointing upon her. I thank you, Lord, that there's a spirit of the Lord that is upon her, anointed her. Lord, I thank you that the spirit of heaviness has been lifted off her shoulders, that the times of refreshing has come in the presence of the Lord. And Lord, I thank you that you are doing something that is absolutely marvelous in her heart and in her life in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that as I'm going to touch her in the name of Jesus, that your power would go through her. Lord, I thank you that your presence in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth is going to arrest her body, bring total freedom in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 I believe God's going to impart something to you. Listen to me. Like, I so believe in this. I so believe in this. Why don't you come? You there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Come, come, come. I know it's, no, 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 not you. That one. The, the gentleman with the black, I know, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm pointing like a cowboy. Come, come. I felt this even from presence gathering. What I heard was the word that you have humbled yourself. That you have humbled yourself. Humbled yourself before the Lord. And I felt that because you have humbled yourself before the Lord. You're facing some situations that might seem frustrating in this season. It's almost like a crossroad. Which path should I take? Which way should I go? But I feel the Lord is saying because you have humbled yourself in the presence of the Lord, I will open up a door that no man can shut. I will open up a gateway and I will cause rivers of living water to flow out of the wilderness. Lord, I thank you in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands. That every place in his heart that has been tormented, every gift that has been not unlocked yet, I prophesy that those gifts would come forth in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for your presence and your anointing upon this man whom you have called, anointed for a season and for a purpose. Lord, I thank you that this impossible situation, this crossroad, I prophesy for every crooked path to become strength in his life in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you that there is a Joshua calling to go in and possess the land in an inheritance, not only for him, but his family in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. I even saw the enemy coming against you once and twice, but he has not prospered because God has a hedge of protection around you and your family. I feel God is saying sickness would not come against you, that God is bringing his healing power upon your life and the life of your family and is going to keep you in perfect health in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Fill him. I want to have five people. You know God is touching you right now. I want you to come and stand here in the line. Five people. If you know God is touching you, just come quickly, quickly, quickly. Stand here. Ash, Peter, can you please help me with, the, with this one? Five people, come on. Stand here. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Thank you. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. That's it. Come Holy Spirit. 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 More of your presence. More of your fire. More of your presence in the name of Jesus. Come Holy Spirit. Come Jesus. Come Holy Spirit. Fill him. Fill him. Fill him. God is saying, say it, say it, act on it, receive it. Lord, I thank you that you're enlarging his capacity to receive. Sons receive, orphan rejects. Sons receives, 
orphan reject. God, I thank you that you're enlarging his capacity to receive because his identity is secure in Christ. Lord, I thank you that you're enlarging his muscles and capacity in the spirit to receive. Act on the word of God and speak the word of God in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill, fill in the name of Jesus. Just receive it. 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 Just let it go through your body. Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I command in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I speak healing. I speak healing to this body. I speak healing to her nerve, to her mind. Lord, I thank you that she is rem her name is removed from the hit list of Satan in the name of Jesus. I command every spirit of infirmity, every demonic power that tried to come against you. I bow its power in Jesus' name. You have no authority. Do you hear what I said? You have no authority in the name of Jesus. Stop tormenting her. She is a child of God and her body is the property of heaven in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for your grace to supernaturally give her the strength for her to walk in a place of absolute freedom in the name of Jesus. Say it. Do it. Receive it. There you go. Come on, church. I want you to pray. Come on, church. Don't look. Pray. In the name of Jesus. Come on, lift her up. In the name of Jesus. 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 I remove shackles in the name of Jesus. I remove shackles in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for your presence. Lord, I remove shackles. Everything that is keeping her bound in the name of Jesus. Lord, I cover her with your feathers and your presence, your healing power, and your deliverance over her. Freedom in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. By the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name. Do you have a couple of more minutes? Okay. Once again, for those that need to go, you're free to go. Okay? Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. So anyone that have uh, any form of... Uh, I felt there's somebody's child, uh, somebody's child that have some kind of, uh, like a very strong food allergies. There's something with just food, somebody's child, strong food allergies. Yeah. Child? Somebody's child? Yours? Bring her up, bring her up, yeah. We get, I'm going to pray for you. Just if you, whatever you are, raise your hand. I saw somebody else raising their hand. If, if, you, if you have a child, just raise up your hand and by faith, just by faith, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Why don't you come, 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 come. In Jesus' name. Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy, come. Do you believe God can heal you? Huh? Do you believe that? Raise up your hands in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your healing power. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, any form of allergies I commanded to leave, that he will have no longer any reactions in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you, Lord, that you are the healer in the name of Jesus. Anyone else, Lord, that have any form of food allergies, we speak healing from the back to the front in the name of Jesus. Any form of stomach disorder. If you get a stomach disorder, raise your hand. Stomach disorder, I command that to be healed in the name of Jesus. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. You got to have faith. Respond to it. Raise up your hand and believe the word in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for your presence. 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 
Thank you for your presence. Lord, I speak healing. 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 No more where she will feel drained from her strength. No more will the enemy steal from her strength or even from her ministry in the name of Jesus. Lord, I speak healing to her body in the name of Jesus. She will not have any form of stomach disorder no longer in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Anyone that is reacting to gluten, gluten, raise up your hand in the name of Jesus. Lord, we speak healing right now in the name of Jesus. Anyone that have any form of intolerance towards gluten, God, we speak healing to them in the name of Jesus. A couple of weeks ago, there was a gentleman. We prayed for high blood pressure. He went to the doctor, and the doctor said that his pre blood pressure was normal again. So just believe as we pray for people in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Anyone in the spinal cord, you might have, a, you, you even had a surgery. I saw a surgery. They performed a surgery. Oh, I knew that. <laughs> but I'll pray for you anyways. I didn't, I, I didn't see you, but I knew that. Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, thank you for that quick recovery in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, for just a creative miracle in the spine in the name of Jesus. That she'll be able to bend without any pain. She'll be able to sit and stand for a long time without any pain in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What about hard of hearing in your in your uh, left ear hard of hearing in your left ear anyone hard of hearing in your left ear hard of hearing in your left ear why don't you just stand up stand up and those who are around them just lay hands on them softly please in jesus name lord i thank you for your goodness Come on, church, pray. Thank you, Lord. 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 Lord, in the name of Jesus, we as a church, we take authority over every form of deafness in those left ears. Lord, we speak to the eardrum in the name of Jesus. Become whole and healed in Jesus' name. Any heart of hearing, any doll of hearing, we speak healing to those ears in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, also we speak to hearts, hearts, Hearts in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Mighty name. I want to release because I know our kids' ministry are out there. But like I said, I'm going to be here. If you have children, get them. Bring them into the sanctuary. If you need to go home, have a blessed Sunday. But I will stand here and I'm going to minister to as many people as long as it takes. One by one, lay hands on you. Because I believe that if you come here in faith... Did you hear what I said? Come in faith. I believe God can do something for you. In Jesus' name. Thank you.